I'm standing before you today to say to the citizens, your government is listening. When I was elected in 2015, the voters were seeking change. They wanted to see a decrease in crime, and they wanted a detailed path forward on many issues facing the city, including poverty and economic development. I believe the election victory was a mandate to begin to implement our campaign promises. We've, camp we've accomplished many of these goals, including reducing crime to only eight murders so far in 2018. We've hired several new police officers, and violent crime is down 20 percent. Now, I realize eight murders is eight too many, but we are making progress. We've also implemented the Savannah Forward Strategic Plan, which is, to, is a detailed plan to deliver on the request of our citizens. We heard during those town hall meetings held across the city, residents wanting sidewalks, improved neighborhoods, better recreation, robust landscapes, landscape maintenance, and on and on. The reason council requested the city manager start the process on the fire fee was to make sure that revenue, that revenue to introduce and expand city program was available. These programs are all worthwhile and important to the city, but it's obvious we're moving too fast, and we have not communicated this in the best manner possible. We needed to explain the process more and expand citizen and business community involvement. We brought too much change too quickly and should have done a much better job explaining our thought process to residents and to the business community. We apologize for letting our zeal to improve the city get ahead of our ability to fund the services. We're listening and we understand that Plan A was not acceptable, so we understand we need to move on to Plan B to move Savannah forward. I'll ask the city manager and his staff to prepare a plan taking advantage of the additional revenues and reduces, reductions of expenses. This plan will include a way to cut all fire fee payments by more than half, $8 per month for a household with a discount. For those who still feel they cannot afford to pay these fees, the city has set aside a hardship fund, which will still be available to them. Time is of the essence. Our millage rate must be set by the end of the month. I'll ask for these plans to be presented in time for City Council to vote on it at our budget retreat on June the 18th, and then the Council can set the millage rate on June the 21st at our regular scheduled meeting. Please make no mistake, this plan will include difficult cuts felt by the city government and the public. With the support of council tomorrow, we will direct the city manager to continue to cut long-term expenses by looking at staffing levels, by eliminating duplication of services, including no less than 5% of non-public safety employees, eliminate unnecessary programs, and postpone non-essential capital improvements. I ask that everything be on the table for cuts other than public safety. With that being the case, there are some hard facts. There are only so much money in the budget. Worse, as years go by, the services required of the city, like our increase, will increase dramatically. Not only does the expenses of providing these services go up, but demands for more service continue as well. And the taxes that fund these services do not increase at the same pace. In short, our needs are outpacing our ability to address them with the current income we receive. Council and I voted unanimously to hire Rob Hernandez. He was brought here to lead our city because he had ideas on how to address the ever-increasing gap between the city's revenue and its expenses. It was council that put these plans in motion. 
Last October, after much encouragement from the entire city council, Mr. Hernandez suggested the fire fee to help close that gap. The idea was to soften the financial responsibilities the, uh, for the taxpayers by including 5,800 properties that did not pay taxes, 10% of our city. We wanted them to participate in funding the resources these properties, schools, government offices, colleges and universities, hospitals, nonprofits, and places of worship. The fee was endorsed by the city council unanimously during the strategic plan workshop. But as usual, the devil is in the details, and the details became challenging for many of our residents, businesses, and religious institutions. Let's face it, the fire fee is the most unpopular topic since the crime numbers of 2015. And you have let us know that. The reaction was strong. Some council members proposed withdrawing without a plan in place. Unfortunately, these plans did not take care of the shortage. Every member of the city of council has looked for alternatives to the fire fee we presented. We also received many suggestions from the public as well. Please understand, some people have told us they believe we can, lead, we can fund the needs within existing resources, but we cannot even come close. While these changes will significantly decrease the financial burden of the original fee, it will not be without pain. We will not be able to fund some of the projects and operations we had proposed for 2018 budget. Belt tightening affects all of us. The public has a right to expect its city leaders to manage their financial affairs in a conservative and responsible manner. Many of you have reminded us of that in the past few weeks. I, along with council, agree. Thank you to the citizens and businesses for your input. And thank you for all your time today. And may God bless Savannah, and may God bless her citizens. I'm Mayor Eddie W. DeLoach. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can you describe for us exactly again what kind of what kind of numbers are we now looking like when you're saying this fee is going to be drastically cut? It's going to be cut. You need to move yeah. to the microphone. Oh, I got to do it. The mic. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, the dress. It. We're going to cut the fees at least half, probably more than half. That original fee was like a hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, hundred and what was the reason? $256, it'll be down to $120 across the board for everybody. So that'll ramp up based on everything else. So stay the same. We're also going to have a one meal decrease if everybody agrees to that. And how about those people that had applied for the discount program? They were, Is that even more discount? Yes, it'll drop it to $96 roughly for anybody that has applied for that and done that. So it'll bring it down considerably. Along with the one mil reduction, it'll be some folks won't be paying anything. But you're talking about programs that are going to get stopped, that are going to get cut. We're talking about 2018. Do you already have those in mind? Uh, you know, we're going to bring them out tomorrow and start talking about them, and we'll take them up at the retreat. We're going to give it to the city manager to look at what we can and can't do with programs that we already got in place, what we don't have in place. But I'll tell you that. Everything that we have passed up to this point, going into the budget, everything that all of those are on on the block, as far as I'm concerned, including and not you know not including my uh, school program, including any number of programs. Uh, if it's to the point that uh, as a question of whether we can cut the overall uh, numbers and the millage and still be within our budget, if it doesn't keep uh, those items that we all hold sacred. Unfortunately, those will have to go. What comes first, the programs or the people? That'll be up to the uh, that'll be up to the council and the city manager. I can't tell you. But, where but we're pushing. I mean, obviously, we're going towards the people because we've cut the whole total fire fee by half. So, I would say we're moving in the direction of the 
of the people that uh, we represent more so than we are the overall. But I mean, the programs that are out there that you're talking about cutting, does that come first or does that reduction in staff for the city? I'll leave it first? as the city manager's job to decide that, not me. Where would you like to be? Where, I, where I, do you believe I, it should I would like to be where the city manager wants to be. I'm going to leave that. Have choice, are you willing to cut people first or do you want to cut the programs? That have been and again, I will go to what the city manager requests and asks for. And uh, we as a council, that's, we, that's why we hired him to look at the hard decisions and decide what those are and we'll work towards him to give us a decision on that. Mr. Mayor, there are some voices out there that have said that the money surplus or the, the, the budget surplus that the city's had, some of that money should be used towards helping this, and you say? And I say we're taking all the monies that we consider available and we've got them on the block. So whatever's out there, that's what we'll be working with. Does that, does that mean that the budget money or the surplus money is going to be but used to it's, it's, a, it's a combination of all of it. Can you tell us more what went into deciding on this, how you came to this conclusion? Well, if you'd have been walking with me lately, like I said earlier, I said I had to buy a dog to get somebody to like me. It's been rough. I mean, folks are not happy. Uh, we've got out, you know, we just got out ahead of it. We, we know what we got to do. We know where we need to go. Uh, we got to depend on an increase in uh, overall, uh, you know, monies from uh, construction and all that, along with uh, 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 continued reevaluations of properties and determine whether we can pick up additional funds that way because, uh, you know, basically somebody that had a, uh, it got, you know, got a uh, Stevens Day bill back 12 years ago, their, their property taxes have gone down 5%, I mean five millage rates because at one time it was at 17 and now it's at 12. So all of those numbers that folks that actually had it, they've actually had a reduction in their overall uh, tax. So we're looking for uh, we're looking for a stabilization with this fire fee, and hopefully we can spread the cost out to uh, more than just the uh, the property owners and get it to where we can have uh, a stable stable uh, cash flow area where we can decide to build a budget based on a on a, a a big platform instead of trying to take it out of one out of one pie. You mentioned that the burden of covering the fees were too heavy for the city. How does the city surplus play into this? It's all, all of that, any surplus or whatever, based on how it's being used. Because uh, a lot of those folks that determined that there was a $10 million overage, we were actually taking those funds and using them to offset costs that we would have cost us the next year trying to work our way into 2019 budget. but. Uh, wherever the city manager feels like we can pull money from or wherever he feels like it's necessary to pull from, that's where we'll pull from. But those items that were listed, all of them except for fund balance, is, it was monies that would save the taxpayers' dollars. And that was the idea along that term. It was not to, uh, it was not to just throw money away. It was actually saving millions of dollars by being able to pay ahead and not having the interest costs that we were going to have to pick up if I understand you correctly, Mr. Mayor, it's almost in the sense of robbing Peter to pay Paul. You're cutting the fee in half, but you're also at the expense of some projects that may need to be funded are also going to be impacted because of that. Is that correct? We're, we're, no, we're just cutting the, uh, we're cutting our fire fee in half. Therefore, we only have X amount of dollars to spend. And we have to determine what those items are that we're willing to spend those dollars on. And that's what this is saying. We're going to hold our budget and we're going to close the gap and then we'll let we'll let uh, the city manager uh, and the council decide what those items that make it uh, you know make it past the uh, the cut or determine what that is i just have to watch it and see where it goes going back to those people cuts you mentioned that those would be non-emergency employees can you speak a little more specifically of where those people I, I, I can't. We, we just pay a general, we just call it a general fund uh, budget item instead of, in other words, we're not going to mess with police and fire and emergency. But in reality, anybody else is, uh, is, is, is in that other, uh, is in the other pile of general fund. And that'll be the operational area where it'll look at. They might not be anybody. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, he has worked really hard to make that fit so i don't know that there's anyone but all i told him was just like all of the items we had wanted to do for instance my uh, school program uh, it doesn't matter if it comes to the point of will we have a uh, 
you know, will we cut the budget like we have said, or will we add this program and raise the budget? We will cut this. We will cut the programs to match the budget we put out there as far as revenue is concerned. Has all the work that's been done thus far, people applying for these discounts through the program, will all of that go into this new plan, or will you have to start over? No, it'll roll just it'll roll just like it is. It's just instead of it being two hundred fifty six dollars, it'll now be one hundred twenty dollars to start out. So it's a significant saving for anyone out there. Eight dollars a month. The chamber did a recent survey, which of course destroyed the fire fee as incredibly unpopular out there. How much did that play into it when your entire business community basically said this is a terrible idea? Well. Uh, I, I, you know, if I looked around, I, I'd have to go find somebody out of town to tell me it was a good program. I don't believe I can find one in town. So, basically, what I'm saying is, it doesn't take the it doesn't take the businesses to determine that. I've sat down with a group of pastors uh, two weeks ago, and uh, probably about 25 of them, great people, you know, but they had one thing on their mind: their constituents and the effect that the fire fee was going to have of it. And I listened to them, and I. We all listened, and we all realized that we were we were barking up the wrong tree. That we needed to do something different. So, we're here today doing that, and uh, hopefully uh, the citizens will follow that, and we'll figure out where our income stream is next year, and then we'll determine how we build off of that income stream next year. But this income stream we've developed here is pretty well set based on the revenues we have. Do you think this belt tightening could, in fact, do more harm than good? If consequently, you have to be eliminating city programs? Uh, all I'll say to that is I got elected by a group of people that think it needs to be tightened up. So I'll get things tightened up and I'll just skip this year and move forward to next year. But whatever we do, we're going to start at square one and work our way back up and develop the programs as we need to develop them based on the income that we have coming in. Would you say the fire fee is still a good idea? But Absolutely. I have, no, have no problem with the concept of the fire fee. It's not, it's not, uh, it is a good concept because it is a cost that is spread to the entire community so that no one segment picks up all the cost. You, you, it's okay at one time, back years ago, it might have been okay, but now everybody has to participate in the cost of running this government. It does, cannot hold out anyone that gets services from this government or any government for that matter, everyone has to participate. It can't be uh, one isolated group carrying the entire load. If you end up raising the millage rate, aren't you just adding more money on top of this lessened fire fee to the same people who are complaining about the amount of money they had to pay for fire fee? Our point on all that is it, it, this is a long-term plan. And I, I think that's really important that folks realize that what we developed originally with this fire fee was a five-year projected no cost increase was was our overall goal when we based this fire fee originally now we had money set aside to make that happen and and, and develop this program for five years so that we would it would be there we would know where we were going the city would know where we were going it was too ambitious okay so we back we backed up we're backed up and we'll figure out what we're going to do from there but we still need to make sure we do a five-year plan long term and that has got to be rebuilt and redone, and, and and we'll determine based on where we go from here what services we have to offer with that. But well, you're proposing to um, retain the millage decrease, right? Yes, yes. I, that's my that's my request, and I'm you know to keep that millage decrease because it gives us it increases our competitive uh, our competitiveness in the community and in in the, in the southeast. And we at 12 percent, and the local communities are at 5 percent. If you were a citizen and you had an opportunity to move somewhere, would you go where it was 12% or 5%? If you had a community to go to, folks are going to gravitate to the lesser cost as far as, uh, the you know, if the benefits are the same, you go to the cheaper tax base. So we want to get our tax base for all the businesses out there that want to move here, all the uh, people that would like to move here. We've got a large area we're developing in Hampstead right now that it's going to be a huge intake of people. Well, we need to make we need to be competitive in the overall southeast to bring those people in. To do that, we need to have our millage in more in line to, with the overall communities around us. You believe you'll get the support from there, the rest of the council that um, supported the fire fee? What now? Do you believe you'll get the support from the rest of the council? I hope we have a dino vote tomorrow. You what? 
hope we have a 9-0 vote in favor of what we're trying to do here, not tomorrow, but on the, at the retreat. Now that where exactly this money is coming from for the fire fee, can the fire services be compromised at all moving forward? Now that's one of the problems we wanted to make sure we didn't have an issue with where we were, and we're talking 2018 budget, so we, it's, uh, we feel comfortable where we are and we feel like with the overall abilities of the fire department won't be touched in any way, along with the police department. You feel that way or you're confident? I'm confident that, that we're not pulling people to do that. You, mean, you mentioned that people still can't pay this new reduced fire fee. There would be a hardship fund. Yeah, there's a hardship already fund. set there. It's the same as it was with the 256. It's Thanks. just going to be operated the same. It's just 20% of 120 rather than 20% of 258, 256. If the opposition continues, is there any likelihood the fee will be eliminated entirely? Uh, I, I'm not recommending that. And what's the impact on revenue? This reduction? Well, it reduces the 21 million that we had in place for overall budget. It's going to drop it about 11 million dollars. So we're cutting it at least in half. The overall revenue projection. And what does fire need to run this year? Hmm? What does fire need to run this year? Fire, if the fire department. Dollar wise, you mean tax? It's around 32 million dollars i mean yeah 32 million yeah okay anything else guys ladies it's great thank you all for taking your time to be here thank you, thank you. Hmm? Um, yeah, here you've got a cough <coughs> you can have so this one